Coming to you from his downtown Denver studio, here's the Backstage Jazz Radio Show with your host, Steve Roby. Welcome friends at home and friends in the studio. This is the Backstage Jazz Show, and I'm Steve Roby. My guest today is jazz pianist and educator Andy Navala. He's here to discuss his upcoming show at Dazzle, and we'll listen to a few selected tracks of his music. Welcome to Backstage Jazz, Andy. Glad to be here. Great. It's great to have you on the show. Thank you. Why don't we start out with a brief overview of your music career and some of your musical influences? I moved to Colorado in 1998 to go to grad school at University of Northern Colorado. Um, I got a master's degree there and performed in jazz groups. And then I did a doctorate at the University of Colorado Boulder. I was the first jazz doctoral student there to start that off. So I was in Colorado about 10 years. And then I was playing with Cajunto Colores, the salsa band, for that time. I started my original quartet there, and we made a, an album on Capri entitled Alone Together. And then I've also toured with the Glenn Miller Orchestra mm. for two years. And then I play a lot with symphonies whenever they bring in a pop artist, vocalist. Mm -hmm. I do that a lot. And one of those is Steve Lippia, a you know, Sinatra singer. And there's Michael Andrews, another Sinatra singer that I do. So kind of a little bit of everything. Nice. And then I've also arranged, arranged and performed uh, for lots of theater shows, playing in the pit. Do a lot of straight ahead, straight ahead jazz, big band jazz, uh, Latin jazz is really my wheelhouse and uh -huh. what I prefer to play, just because it's high energy. Yeah, you know I love playing music with energy. As a pianist, your role in that is more of a percussionist, and I've always thought myself of as a closet drummer. So, <laughs> me too. <laughs> Can you talk about uh, some of your musical influences, uh, mostly the early ones? What uh, what sparked your interest in uh, uh, becoming a musician? Well, my grandfather was a classical pianist who would perform on the radio. So we've always had it in our family. And that meant my mother introduced me to piano at a very long, young age. Mm -hmm. And I was always having to do the piano lessons and I had a couple of years where I was serious and I had to choose between piano and baseball. And then my parents chose piano. <laughs> <laughs> and then I've always been fortunate to have uh, great mentors. Like in high school, I had a great band director who was a pianist. For my undergrad in uh, Boise, Idaho, I had a great jazz piano teacher who was musical director for Paul Anka. So he knew mm -hmm. what you had to do to, you know, the skill set required to play gigs, play jazz and improvise. And he kind of opened my eyes and ears to all of that because my high school did not have a jazz band i wasn't yeah. introduced to that till college and then he he kind of steered me in the direction to go to colorado when i first moved there i studied with art landy mm -hmm. and then at at boulder it was uh when i went there it was chip stevens who was a great bebop pianist who played a lot in uh, the denver area before he moved to illinois and then i studied with pat bianchi at boulder but i think you know, I've, I've been fortunate to be in the right place in the right time as far as, you know, the teachers that I needed at that time, I think, you know, because everybody is different. There was a time where I needed to really study bebop, and then there was a time where I needed to learn how to be more creative. Yeah. Like Art Landy, it's about being being creative and exploring your creativity. So it's been kind of a unique experience. Cool. And I think that kind of determines any musician's style is mm -hmm. just who are very influenced at a certain period of time and you, you take what you, you can take and then it yeah. kind of turns into your sound. Well, since we're talking about musical styles, how does that apply to your quartet? Uh, what are the different musical styles your quartet plays? And uh, can you talk about the arrangements? When I first played with Cajunto Colores, um, I was pretty green, um, didn't know what I was doing. And the conga player, the late Victor Nunez, and the bass player, the late Jimmy Trujillo, both Denver uh, pillars in the Latin community just gave me a stack of CDs and told me to go do my homework. <laughs> and in those CDs, there was stuff by Eddie Palmieri, Gonzalo Rubacabla, mm -hmm. Michelle Camino, great percussionist, the Tito Puente stuff, wow. all those guys, Hilton Ruiz. And so I just started living with that because at the time I was living in Greeley and driving driving down to Denver to play with them. And they were working two, three nights a week. So I had an hour each way to listen, you know, and back then you had CD players in your car. So I would just listen to an <laughs> album going down and another one coming back and then go to the practice room with headphones. Nice. And I just 
really fell in love with it. And then so I wanted to play some of those songs on my own with my own group. So I started transcribing them and writing them out. Wow. And so that just kind of evolved. Like whenever we hear something that we want to do, I'll sit at the computer and transcribe it, put it into notation, and then send the recording in the chart and, and we play it. And mm-hmm. so I've kind of developed that skill. I also do a lot of a lot of that work for 3-2 Music Publishing, which is primarily Latin jazz. Mm-hmm. This quartet, like we've done a couple of recent uh, videos, and one of them is Night in Tunisia, and that was the Caribbean Jazz Project did that 20 years ago. And it's odd meter, and it's not anything you're going to find in any book. So I sat down and wrote it out, and we had to rehearse it. That's kind of where our music comes from. And then also, when we get together, we kind of formulate our own arrangements just based on everybody's experience and their styles. And with the group, you know, everybody brings their own their own unique voice to it. I like to play with guys that are way better than me. It helps me grow. Uh-huh. And these guys all all have stuff they like and they can do and strengths. And we try to, whatever we're playing, we try to just show those strengths. And so it's like our group is going to have a, a different sound than um, if I put another core, quartet together with different guys. Sure. Speaking of uh, A Night in Tunisia, I have that track queued up. Tell our listeners who's in the quartet. Of course, it's myself on piano. The conga player is Frankie Quinones, who's Puerto Rican and lived in Boston, went to Berkeley. He's playing with all the Latin heavies that come through Atlanta. Uh, the bassist is Andy Elau. He recently moved to Atlanta from New York, uh, where he was playing with all of the, the big Latin folks up there. Bobby Sanabria, Ray Barreto, um, all those guys. Some of these recordings that I was tra- transcribing songs off of, he was the bass player. So we're very fortunate to have, have him. And then our drum, drum set player is Emra Kotan. And he's from originally from Turkey. So he studied over there in, a conser- in the Turkish Conservatory. He came mm-hmm. over here. He's the drummer for artist India Ari. Hmm. He played with Victor Wooten last weekend. Oh. He's also helping helping me teach at JSU. He, he runs a drum set ensemble, if you can imagine that, and helps out with the Latin ensemble. Wow. So all these guys, yeah. you know, they're all some of the best at what they do, and we all come together to get our our kind of unique sound and we like the you know the high energy latin jazz the high difficult high difficulty level because it's exciting for us to play and it's exciting to to listen and it's challenging where was this track recorded we have a a nice space here at jacksonville state university multi-camera and multi-track recording all right well let's listen to a night in tunisia with the andy naval quartet Thank you. 
You're listening to Backstage Jazz, and my guest today is Andy Nabala, pianist and educator. Andy, uh, I'm going to play uh, your version of uh, Herbie Hancock's Butterfly. What can you add about this one? I have been a big fan of Herbie Hancock. He was the first jazz pianist that I was introduced to that I really loved, and I love how he plays all the different styles, and, and he played in salsa bands in New York, so he knows what the Latin thing is. I've always loved this song, and this arrangement is a mix of his arrangement and then what the great vocalist Gretchen Parlato has done. She kind of put some odd meters, changed it up, and changed a couple chords. Mm -hmm. uh, the bass player brought in an African pattern to mix it so we didn't know that it was going to sound like this until we till that day because i i really wanted to play this song and i was going to try to do it like herbie mm -hmm. and then the percussionist was like oh check this version out oh so we're kind of combining <laughs> elements of a, a bunch of different things plus what we our original ideas and so it's kind of like a melting pot arrangement of this song this is butterfly by the andy navala quartet on backstage jazz
Andy, um, you've got a show coming up at Dazzle on November 10th. What can uh, your fans look forward to at the show? Well, we're we're playing one one set from 6.30 to 8. And we are going to play um, music from Cuba, Chucho Valdez um, arrangements, um, some of the stuff that you've heard on the show. We've got a couple other things in the pipeline. We have done some recording, and we're going to bring some of those arrangements of some sting tunes and some original compositions mixed in with some Cuban traditional tunes, uh, Cuban folk music that we've kind of arranged ourselves to give it a, a modern twist. Mm-hmm. Um, and we'll throw a couple jazz standards in there, and I'm, I'm hoping some friends will come down and sit in and join us. And All right. That's we'll always have fun. A, have a magical, yeah, we'll have a magical evening. Sounds like a great evening of music. You're also an educator, too. You've got a a clinic coming up at uh, Cherry Creek High. Do you want to tell us about that? Yeah, every time we we go somewhere, we always try to visit a local school um, because I, when I was a student, groups would come in and talk to us about everything from playing gigs to arranging to improvisation to professionalism to life as a musician. And it really had a positive impact on myself and my classmates and so anytime we're going somewhere we always try to do something educational Mm -hmm. like that and kind of give back a little and it it also gives us a chance to play in front of the kids and get them to play with us you know it's just a positive thing that we're 
So we're rewarding. trying to do. Yeah. Fine. Is it open to the public or just the uh, the school kids there? The school kids at Cherry uh-huh. Creek, it's for them. But uh-huh. it's, yeah, if someone would like to go, they could uh, contact the band director there. His name is Tim Libby at Cherry Creek High School. Uh-huh. And I'm sure they could get a get a guest pass and come hang out with us in the band room while we're we're jamming with those kids. Sounds like fun. Yeah. And their band director is a great musician, too. Who's... Hey, before we wrap up, where can our listeners find out more about your music and your show schedule? Well, we have a website, andynebulamusic.com, or you could just go andynebula.com, and there is a performance schedule on there. Uh, we also have a YouTube page, and you can find links to that through the website but or search Andy Nebula on YouTube, and we have a bunch of performances on video there. And then we're in the process of recording an album, so that should be out hopefully in the spring. Great. And for our listeners, I'll put the, the links to what Andy just described in the show notes for this episode so they can just click on those and go right there and find out the information they're looking for. And just a reminder, too, for our listeners, you can catch the Andy Navala Quartet at Dazzle on Friday, November 10th for a 6.30 p.m. show. Doors open an hour earlier at 5.30. I always tell our listeners to get there an hour early so they get a good seat, are comfortable. They've got great food there. And the tickets are available now at DazzleDenver.com. Thanks for your time today, Andy, and have a great show at Dazzle. Thank you. Thank you for having me. If you're enjoying the Backstage Jazz Show, we'd love for you to like, subscribe, and leave a review on Apple Podcasts. And now, back to the show. The Backstage Jazz Show was recorded at Little Raven Studios in downtown Denver, and our producer was Craig Stevens. You can find Backstage Jazz wherever you listen to podcasts. Be sure to stop by our website, backstage-jazz.com, where all past and current episodes have been archived. If you'd like to be a guest on the show, you can email us at backstagejazz at fastmail.com. This is Steve Roby. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time on Backstage Jazz. You've been listening to the Backstage Jazz Show. Join us next time for more great jazz and interviews with your favorite musicians.